Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and today's video we are going to be starting out a kind of a kind of an unusual kind of situation here we got a big old kind of blimp thing here mounted on the side of a rocket so yeah you don't uh, you don't you don't really see that every day that's kind of kind of weird but uh, let's get the engines fired up and we'll get flying here and then I'll kind of explain what the crap we're looking at here so all right gonna throttle up all of the engines just all of the engines and then we're gonna go ahead and lift off and we go and get the time lapse going so we have two side boosters which are going to be depleting fuel quite quickly, then they will get staged away and then it will be our four main core boosters which will act as our, our center stage basically and get us most of the way to orbit. So this is a recreation of the Havoc project, also known as the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept. This is a thing that NASA thought might be a good idea, which was to basically say like, hey, what if we like put blimps in Venus? Epic idea. Um, so we're gonna be sending this big old blimp guy out to EVE, uh, which is uh, uh, Kerbal Space Program's analog to Venus, basically. It's a little bit bigger relative to the main body or Kerbin, essentially, but um, yeah, it's basically EVE. Uh, basically Venus that the big thick atmosphere is kind of the kind of the point there as we are now starting to gain a little bit of altitude a little bit of speed now we look at the very epic uh, IVA view out of the blimp there uh, so we had to kind of make a few creative liberties um, the, the biggest one is that the havoc project has like an inflatable blimp unfortunately that's not a thing with this mod um, the KSP with the blimp mod so we're just gonna have this big old blimp here mounted like almost like space shuttle style on top of this monster rocket which has just depleted its bottom stage and luckily we are now on a epic suborbital trajectory as the boosters can fly away as they cross the carbon line very shortly we're going to fire up our second stage or our third stage upper stage um, to circularize our orbit and then we can start planning our trajectory out to eve so yeah this this is a really ridiculous idea so basically uh, if you don't know Venus, uh, it is a very, 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 very thick uh, atmosphere. Like, it is so thick that you will just get crushed, basically, if you try to sit there. Like, it is so thick that, like, like, like the, the chips and computers, like, melt because of the high pressure. Like, you basically can't even use computers. It's just insane. Everything just gets crushed on Venus. It is insane. Um, we have stage way or upper stage now. Now it is time to light up our nuclear transfer stage, or we can guess start our maneuver and then we'll light it up and then head out to eve um so for for the reasons that i just said landing and like walking around on venus is really not a not a practical idea so the the nasa's people said hey you know if we can't land on eve uh, eve venus well um maybe we can float on it so basically since the atmosphere is so thick it really doesn't take a lot to to make a floating blimp on venus and the same thing goes for eve um, so they said, hey, blimps, um, so, uh, yeah, we've done some correction birds, which I've kind of just, uh, cut, cut, cut off, cut out of here, out, blop, 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 words are hard, um, and now we're just basically arrive at Eve. As we are gonna begin our capture burn at Eve, would like to quickly say, if you are enjoying the video, very epic subscribe button, I feel like I say that every time, very epic, I don't know, maybe it's getting old, anyway, we got a subscribe button, we got some epic merch, pilotshop.com, we also got some discords, very awesome discord, and we have the member button, or the join button, which can make you become a member, um, on the YouTube channel, and then also the Patreon, so if you are interested in that stuff, that'd be awesome. Thank you, everyone, who has helped us get to 12,000 subs. Very awesome. But, either way, back to the blimp thing. So, um, I do basically just, but we, we get captured on an elliptical orbit, and then I just kind of lower the orbit, just because I want to make some inclination changes, so we can get as close to, um, as close to equatorial as possible. Uh, we end up using most of our delta V here, because I really try and get this orbit nice and fine-tuned, uh, in the transfer stage. Um, so, yeah, the, the basic idea of Havoc is they would send these blimps, or I guess initially is one blimp is one we're doing here, um, out to Venus, and then the crew would just hang out there for a little bit on the blimp, and then they will, we'll get to the actually the return in a little bit later in the video as we have a very cool looking staging thing here. There it goes, we um, go ahead and light up our entry engines now, which basically, so uh, Eve, you know anything about Eve? Um, on, in KSP, it is absolutely brutal, the atmosphere there, you get, you just, everything burns up, so basically we have these giant 
um, rhino engines there with big fuel tanks and we're just gonna fire them up for a solid like over a minute here in the, as we get into the uh, into the atmosphere of Eve and we're basically just gonna slow slow the thing down like almost completely we slow it down to about uh, a third of orbital velocity just a little under a third of orbital velocity um, which basically will be able to save us from the heating so um, Eve's atmosphere starts at uh, 90 kilometers um, and then as you saw, we got temperature gauges almost right away. So we, we need to burn all of the fuel out of these engines to be able to get the blimp uh, successfully down on the, on the well, not the surface, but into the atmosphere, I guess. Um, so we are almost done with our burn. And it looks like we are just under 1,000 meters a second as we come through 55 kilometers. So everything is basically good on that front. So there you go. We have depleted the fuel, and now we're going to stage away the... Uh, landing engines or the deorbit engines or the entry engines, whatever you want to call them. And now we're going to basically go under blimp control. So we're going to activate the control surfaces. There's the, there's the kind of the gondola, the command gondola is what it's called. Uh, and the mod as we kind of fall through the upper parts of the atmosphere below 40 kilometers. And then we are going to start to uh, make a quick save quick. And then we are going to uh, pop open the blimp controls, which we've already done. Um, and then we're just basically going to just increase our buoyancy. Um, which is going to try and make us as light as possible to try and uh, get us to as high high an altitude as possible, um, because for reasons you will you will see it shortly here. We got a lot of alarms going off for some reason as we now descend through 27 kilometers as the speed is starting to reduce, and then we are starting to level out on uh, onto onto the onto the into the atmosphere. So here we are. Welcome to Eve. Um, so, next thing we gotta do now that we are nice and leveled off at around 26,000 meters above the surface, which is really high up, um, we can go ahead and pop open our engines, and then we will uh, light them up momentarily, and then we can start uh, getting some powered flight here on Venus, or Eve! Wow, I keep getting them mixed up. Um, yeah, to put this in context, this blimp could probably go at around 8 kilometers on Kerbin, and this is 20, just about 20, almost 27 kilometers on Eve, which just kind of just goes to show the crazy... The cr you know, the craziness of this atmosphere here. Um, you go ahead and power up the engine. You're, to be honest, if you were me, I'd be kind of freaked out just hanging out there on, on Venus um, for like a hundred days just floating above it. Like, a, like what if I fall? You know, you're dead if you fall. Um, so, there you go. we can actually go ahead and power up the um, power up, up the blimp. But now we're going to crossfade to a rocket. What be this, you may ask? This be our way of getting home. So, this is this is really where the creative liberties start to start to take effect here, because the real havoc blimps use this really ridiculous and very vague return type thing. Um, I can actually link the video to the little render that uh, NASA made about havoc. There, I, yeah, I'll put it in the description below. Um, and essentially, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to be sending a return stage out to Eve here. So we're going to go ahead and do our transfer. Burn, and then we're gonna go ahead and capture around Eve, and this is a bit where being high, as high up as possible in Eve's atmosphere is helpful for the for the blimp because, if you may have noticed, uh, the blimp actually has a, a little rocket hanging out beneath it. That's actually a majority of the weight of the blimp, like literally 60 to 70 percent of the weight of the entire blimp is that rocket. And that rocket, what happens is the crew, once they're ready to go, they'll hop in the rocket, and then they'll get out. And that actually makes an Eve ascent way, way, way easier because one of the biggest problems with an Eve ascent is the atmosphere is. So so thick that your engines both lose a lot of efficiency um, and the atmosphere 60 you have to get a lot of thro throttle to like power through but now we are super high up so that should be less of a problem so we're gonna go ahead and get ready to detach the rocket right about now there it goes so we'll be firing up our singular vector engine as we are now detached from the blimp and we are immediately gonna pitch super 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 aggressively um, because the gravity on Eve is very high and we need a lot a lot of power to basically you know not fall into the atmosphere so gonna go ahead and start our ascent right now we have all of our crew transferred onto the rocket sadly the blimp is now going to go crash and die and explode as we are now getting ready to head on up to an orbit into eve and then we'll be rendezvousing with our return capsule and bringing ourselves back to Kerbin. So, um, this thing is almost an SSTO. Um, the bottom stage does most of the work to get it, to get us uh, out of EVE. Um, again, the design for the real one is kind of vague. It almost seems like an SSTO, which does not seem, it's definitely not possible on EVE. Like, I tried SSTO, not gonna work. So we basically have a mini upper stage um, with that poodle engine here. It's just over a thousand meters a second of delta V, which will be lighting up right about now. 
as we are about to uh, basically we'll be able to be able to cut the engines and then we'll have a few hundred meters a second to spare once we get in orbit which is very 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 epic so um by the way some of you may have noticed i did uninstall waterfall a lot of people are telling me to get it and then i got it last video and now it's like gone so the reason it's gone is because when you have a lot of engines on a craft waterfall just really lags the game um, and that was definitely the case uh, with that big giant rock you saw at the beginning of the video when it had like 50, 54 engines, I believe. And yeah, it really ran like like three or four times better without Waterfall. So yeah, Waterfall had to get yeeted out of existence for this video. But it will be back for the next one. Do not, do not fret. So now we're going to go and switch back to our transfer stage, uh, our return vehicle, as we are going to get set up for a pretty ridiculous um, rendezvous here. So... Uh, we're coming in base at two kilometers a second, basically, and if we overshoot our rendezvous, our docking, we are going to fall back into Eve's atmosphere. It'll be bad, and we have a really low TWR nuclear stage, so this will just be a jolly old time. Uh, so I can actually go and set up a maneuver node to make my docking just a touch easier, and then we'll be getting ready to get. But that's look, that's a lot of delta v. It, it, it takes a deceivingly high amount of delta v to change your orbit around Eve, just because it is so massive, very very big. Um, I don't know what the French thing is. Wah wah croissant. <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, we're about at our maneuver node, and then we are going to point to the target, and then we are going to light up the engine, and we're going to slow down around Eve to get ready for our docking with the command module, which is in low Eve orbit, and then we'll be transferring the crew to this uh, command module, and then we will be heading back to Kerbin to bring the crew home. So actually... The, 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 the long-term vision for Havoc, not like this thing is ever going to happen. I mean, I wish. Um, <laughs> it'd be cool to see, like, Venus colonization with blimps and stuff. That'd be sick. But the long-term plan is they're going to send, like, these giant fuel depot blimps, which are just going to be insane, massive type thing. I don't know if they have fuel depot, but they're like, these giant blimps. They're going to have, like, a bunch of those normal-sized blimps, with, which actually are actually the biggest blimps in the world, but they actually get built. They're, like, ridiculously big. Um, the normal one is one we had in this video. And then they're gonna have like a bunch of them all flying around at once, and they were gonna like dock up, and it was gonna be amazing, and there's gonna be like blimp heaven, right? Um, yeah, so that's just not gonna happen. <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Um, it would be cool to see, like I said, but yeah. And also, kind of another kind of plot hole in the havoc idea here is the blimp is really small, like the actual usable, livable area, because. 80% of the, the volume, well, I guess 99% of the volume is probably the, the hydrogen, but a lot of it, like the livable volume, like the, the bottom bit, like excluding the main air tank or whatever, the big helium hydrogen tank, um, it's, uh, and here we're going to forget to deploy the docking port, so boink, very big brain moment right there, um, it's really just all, it's basically just the rocket, and then you have a little, like, command area, and then you have the capsule, essentially, is what the crew have to live on for hundreds of days, both transferring out, and then and then just hanging out on Venus, waiting for the transfer window back home. So, yeah, that probably would get very comfortable, I don't know, especially if you're, like, hovering over a planet, that just, that doesn't sound appealing, but, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go pretty quickly through our return here, so we are going to be doing a bird, we are going to be doing another bird, um, the Delta V was super close, like, Lord Delta V had, like, 15 to spare. Very, very, very close. We actually looked at another burn and said he wouldn't have had enough, but somehow that worked out. KSP maneuver nodes are broken. Point is, we are coming back at a really steep angle, but, you know, KSP heat shields are basically overpowered. Well, not basically overpowered, they just are overpowered, and we're just going to come in here, smashing into the atmosphere at, like, 50 Gs. Absolutely no problem at all, as our nuclear stage will go ahead and melt. And now we can come in for a very fast re-entry. Like, in one time speed, this whole re-entry was, like, two minutes. So, <laughs> um, maybe even only, like, a minute and a half. It's great. So, like, normally, entries are, like, 20 minutes. I guess it depends on when you, I guess, depends. I mean, I guess when you first cross the car, maybe it's only, like, 15, but... I don't know. Um, but the point is, we came down real quick into the atmosphere, and we also got a lovely water glitch here, so um, it'll be kind of weird, kind of trippy when we touch down here. So we're going to pop on the parachute. Looks like we're still way high up, but actually the water's being invisible. Epic scatterer glitch. And here we go. The water's kind of appear out of nowhere here in just a second. And... Hello, water! So, yeah. Trippy water, right? Anyway... Um, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. On screen is all of the members. If you want to become a member, you hit the join button below. Also on screen is all the Patreons. If you want to become a Patreon, you can hit the link in the description. But that is going to be it for me today. I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.